Happy Wednesday, everybody. Do you remember Mrs. Frizzle, the lizard, the school bus, Arnold? We're taking that bad boy into the mind of four-time Super Bowl champion Rob Gronkowski. How, why, what will be in there? No one knows. Also, Raven Marlon Humphrey's sister sort of shooting her shot at Sam Hubbard, who's a Bengal. Does this divisional faux pas deserve a red card? Mark Ingram joins us with that. And we start with underreactions heading into the divisional round. Bills fans, get ready. That's right, Red Cards with Mark Ingram coming up. Gromkowski will be on the show. We're going to get his thoughts uh, on Tom Brady, of course. Maybe get his thoughts on making reservations at the Waffle House. Who knows? Keep it here for that. But I just want to put a, these are our red, red card on the name divisional round. It is an objectively lackluster, womp womp, lame name. It is, as far as tournaments, as far as playoffs are concerned. In a world of super, it was once Wild Card Weekend, and then they upped the ante to super Wild Card Weekend, where you have Final Fours and Elite Eights and Sweet Sixteens and things like The Masters. Even Waste Management's kind of a cool name. Or as Marissa was telling me before we got on the show, in Benchwarmers, Sandler movie, they have uh, something called Mel's Tournament of Three Baseballers and Three Older Guys. Like, those are great names <laughs> for things. Divisional Round. Sounds like a lame, sorry, golf Twitter, a lame golf tournament, like a classic, like something regal where I'm wearing uncomfortable shoes, doesn't it? So I have been, so, you know, I have nothing in common with Gretchen Wieners from, Wiener, Wieners? Wieners. Okay, great, that's gonna be on Twitter virally in a minute. Uh, from Mean Girls. Mean Girls, great movie, if you haven't seen it, she's like the, the heiress to these toaster strudel empire uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, and she tries to make fetch happen. And at, of course, Regina George is like, it's not gonna happen. I have tried for years. I sitting at the, at the table that is in NFL offices, the, the good morning football table said, throw down round. I called it, every time it said divisional round, I think I would just say throw down round because I think it's a much cooler name. And it hasn't stuck, it got no love. Got no, pfft, divisional round stays. It, can we change it? Can we get this going? Do you have an even better name option for me? Let me know uh, at either Hey K Adams or Up and Adams Show. But divisional round, so fetch. We gotta make it happen. Okay, uh, some things that we are looking forward to this weekend in the throwdown round and that I think that we're underreacting to. Doesn't it sound good? I know, around the league. Uh, first off in our underreactions, uh, mid-season return of Tredavious White and what it's meant to the Buffalo Bills who face the Bengals. Man, Trey, super bummer. Love him as a person, a character, and then he's on the field doing his thing. He's one of the best corners in the National Football League. He tears his ACL last season. Later on in the season, it was around week 12, and he missed the entirety of the Bills' playoff run. And I don't think it's a stretch to think he really could have made a significant difference in preventing you know, what we saw from Patrick Mahomes in Buffalo's devastating loss to that team uh, in the throwdown round a year ago. So he made his return this season almost one year to the day on Thanksgiving Day against the Lions and coincidentally, mm -hmm, the same day the Bills defense suffered another brutal injury, losing Von Miller for the remainder of the season. This all matters because when Trey got back and he's back on the field, they're undefeated. They're 7-0. They've held opposing quarterbacks to the fifth lowest passer rating in the league. And while he didn't look like his all-pro self right out the gate, you can't really expect that from him. And he's really looking even better as of late, making vintage Trey White plays. Look at this interception of Mac Jones. Now, granted, I could intercept Mac Jones. But this was Week 18, a big game, lots of different energies with that little Buffalo team, and they're trying to secure a two-seed for the playoffs. It's an important game, and he looked awesome there, and I'd love to see it. And he really might be the, the Bills' key in containing the Bengals' passing attack this weekend. Uh, and he's going to see, well, fellow LSU guys, you know, he's going to see Jamar Chase and Buffalo's pass rush has surprisingly really had a tougher time getting home since losing Von Miller. Um, saw this on Twitter yesterday. I wanted to bring it to everybody. Oh, man, Von Miller, like, that's kind of mean. Jeez. Oh, uh, their pressure rate with a four-man rush has dropped from third with Von all the way down to 19th. I think this is per NFL research. I mean, this is since that knee injury. That's a bigger impact than I thought. So it means that White and this Bill secondary, they've got to bring it. They're tasked with holding, you know, up longer in coverage. Uh, and against Joey B and Chase and Higgins and Boyd and all those guys, that's going to be a pretty tough task. So 
if Buffalo is going to get it done, I do think it's because Mr. 27, Trey White, one of the best characters in the league, to be honest, has a big day. So underreacting to him, his impact, him being healthy at the right time, that's something to keep your eye on this weekend in the said throwdown round. Okay. Um, I want to keep things focused on the secondary here. Because while the 49ers' number one ranked defense has been incredible as a unit for the vast majority of the season, I think we may be underreacting to some of the struggles their secondary has had of late. Over the past month, they've ranked, man, this is bad, this is bad. They've ranked bottom five in pretty much every category when it comes to pass defense. And this is against Taylor Heineke, Carson Wentz, Jarrett Stidham. I mean, Geno Smith, David Blau is on this list, guys. Really, their DBs have made plenty of plays all year, leading the league with over 20 interceptions. They have 21. Lately, they've been giving up their fair share too, okay? We saw it on Wild Card Weekend. Super Wild Card Weekend, sorry. DK Metcalf. And he's a beast, of course, and he's incredible. But he just tore through this unit. 133 yards and two touchdowns, including what you just saw. That was that 50-yard strike from Gino, where I was like, oh, my gosh, the Seahawks have something here. They're not going to get swept by this team. Uh, and I'm not saying it's time to panic by any means. We're picking holes in, like, the team that I think has the easiest path to make it to the Super Bowl and win it. But if the Dak Prescott that we saw on Monday night shows up this weekend at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, you know, that against that, and this guy is, you know, the one that put up five touchdowns, that Jack Prescott, against what is a solid Bucks defense. Uh, I don't know. There's a world where the Cowboys could pull off a stunning upset here, and that would be the reason. And it might be up to Bosa and the boys up front to make sure Dak obviously doesn't have time to take advantage of what might be the only weak spot in what is an exceptionally tight Niners squad. So that's another thing I think we need to be keeping our eyes on, the pass defense, the secondary uh, of late. Because Dak Prescott, granted... A different guy can show up, but if he's what he was Monday night, I'm worried. Um, I also think we are underreacting just in general. We're talking about the name Wild Card Weekend, and then it's become Super Wild Card Weekend. It has been so fun. Over the past two years, right, the NFL decides to add an extra playoff spot in each conference, and there was so much concern from my family members, from fans, from myself even. Like, what is this going to do to the playoffs? What is this going to do as far as parity, as far as good games, as far as product, as far as watering down the playoffs as a whole, um, or making the end of the regular season less dramatic? If you think about this, though, if the playoffs hadn't been expanded, the entire playoff field would have been set before we even got to week 18, okay? We would have been robbed of the Sunday night classic between the Lions and Packers. This alone is enough for me to love this new playoff system, okay? And really, both of those teams would have been buried. I love that the extra spot gave a couple of teams that caught fire late in the season, momentum, all that matters, a chance to get in. I love it. We've had the best football because of it. This weekend, there was concern that we'd have boring games. <laughs> That's so stupid thinking back at it. What is this going to look like? Two teams playing without the starting quarterback, no Tua, no Lamar. Uh, you know, heavy underdogs all around. The Ravens and Dolphins, those are the best games. They gave us two of the most entertaining ones on the entire slate and set the stage, by the way, for what's going to be remembered as one of the greatest plays in all of playoff history. The fumble in the jungle. Is that where we're going with, or is it the immaculate rejection per uh, – Mike Florio, because we credit Mike Florio on the show when he says something. We give him that love. Um, so we're going to witness, you know, something special that we never would have seen had we not had that. And let's not forget about Saturday night either. No snooze fest. The Jags pull up one of the most epic comebacks. They pulled themselves out of a 27-zip hole, stunning the Chargers. This is great, epic football, people. And if that wasn't enough... Oh, Doug Peterson, gotta love ya. The Balky resurgence, uh, second story arc. We are obsessed with it. But we also made history, potentially. I'm not sure that anyone has ever made a reservation to Waffle House. Okay? And so history was made this wild card weekend. It was a planned thing. Trevor said last week, quote, I told the team once we win against the Chargers, we're going to Waffle House. And apparently... His wife made a reservation for them. They walk in. This doesn't happen, guys. This doesn't happen without Wild Card Weekend. Uh, and I don't understand how anyone could ever want less playoff football. So everyone can keep yelling at their clouds, you grandpas and grandmas out there with all of this. Uh, so we just wanted to take a moment to celebrate what truly was an enjoyable viewing experience. I was on a plane for some of it, and I was uh, so upset. 
I was so upset, and, and I'll be parking my keister on a lazy boy somewhere all week. I just said that. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Oh, golly. Uh, do we have any tweets? Anybody can check Twitter. Any tweets about throwdown round? No, nobody, anybody in, anybody out. How can we make this happen? Happen, happened. I don't know what I'm saying. What is it? Please beat the show. We appreciate you. What do we got? Throwdown round does have a nice ring to it. Thank you. Divisional round seems a bit basic. Now, I'm not against basic. I'm okay with, with things that I really am. I have a whole basic theory. We'll get into that in the off season. I, I advocate, what was it that we changed what? Change, change it to throwdown round. Who do we have to talk to? Somebody get me roll up on the phone. Hans, get me to Goodell. Patch me in. Troy Vincent, let's go. We need to change this and up it. Super divisional round isn't going to work. Super throwdown round. Now we have something. Uh, we have a superstar up next, a super, 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 super bold champ. That's right, four rings, maybe another one down the line, but we have the, down the line, we have the one and only Rob Gronkowski next. The old world tight end, the six foot seven freak. You can call me to go. Rob Gronkowski. Touchdown! Oh my goodness. Go, go, go. Holy guacamole. The greatest of all time, go, they call me go. Gronk's back, baby, a four-time Super Bowl champion, FanDuel family member, a guy who's very hardworking on his kicking as he's kicking a field goal at halftime via FanDuel uh, with the help of Adam Vinatieri, who was kind enough to join us yesterday. But now Gronk is back. Hey, Gronk. What's up, Kay? How you doing? I'm so good. I'm so good. You always have a different background. You're always some. You, you're never in the same place. We never know what you're up to. But I want you to know, Rob, we're going to go on a journey today. I like a journey. All right. I'm a mystery man yeah. as well. So this journey, you know, goes well with the mystery <laughs> man. Okay. We're gonna, have you ever seen the magic school bus or read the books? Yes. Uh, when I was in elementary school. Yes. All the time. Mrs. Frizzle, the lizard, they'd go into space. They'd go into like bodies and stuff. Well, we're going to do that. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get sued. So we're not going to call it the magic school bus. We're going to call it the whimsical motor vehicle. And we're going to head inside the mind of Rob Gronkowski. Here's what's gonna happen, my friend. I'm gonna show you a photo. He's so scared, <laughs> I'd be so scared if I was him. Uh, we're gonna show you a photo and you tell me just what goes through your mind when you see this image, okay? Let's see the first All image right. that pops in. Okay, it's Mike McCarthy dancing after the Cowboys took care of business. What do you think? Uh. I wasn't really sure what it was at first because I didn't see any of the Cowboys uh, jerseys uh, because it was Mike McCarthy's back. And uh, it kind of looked like it was actually myself at draft day giving my family a hug. <laughs> That's what I thought at first. This actually threw me off. I mean, other than that, I got nothing else to say. How do you, yeah. think, how do you think those Cowboys will do against the Niners this week? Uh, I think the Niners are too stacked. I mean, the Cowboys, they played their butts off. They were, uh, they played, you know, to their strengths the other day. Uh, they lit it up, that's for sure. Uh, I actually said uh, when I was on air with Fox about a couple weeks ago that the Cowboys are always pretenders, not contenders. Oof. So they proved me wrong this year. I mean, I, my, my statement was kind of correct for, you know, the, follow, the previous years, the previous five years, but... Uh, they proved me wrong, so I got to give it to the Cowboys. Hats off to them. There we go. Uh, they, they they did a good job. They played up to their potential, but the 49ers are too stacked. The uh, 49ers are going to win the game. Mm, I've heard, and we're going to keep going. I don't know what's next. I've heard this is this next image is your cheat meal made by M Mama Gronkowski. Yes, yes. That's my mother's chicken souffle right there. She's been making it since I've been a kid. Yeah, she's actually... I think she's been making actually before I was even born. I, uh, my grandma, which is my mom's mom, created the recipe and it's, uh, it's a chicken souffle. It's the best dish out there. My mom is the best cook out there as well. And uh, let me tell you, chicken souffle blows everyone's <laughs> mind away. Our friends all love it. Our family all loves it. It's just one of the best meals that you can have. Trevor Lawrence and the Jags won, and then they went to Waffle House. What did you do after you had big wins like that? Did you have chicken souffle with your mom, or did you go out? Uh, when I was in my young 20s, it was rip as many beers as you possibly could. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, and then later on, uh, when I was getting, you know, 
later in my 20s and in my 30s, it was uh, go home and start doing treatment on your body so you, you can get ready for the uh, following <laughs> week. But uh, I liked it better when I was young 20s. I would actually, um, after games, in the post game for the Patriots, there's a hallway, and there that's where the reception was after the game. Your friends and your family could go there. And uh, I would just load up on food, chicken fingers, pizza, macaroni. I, I would steal all the drinks from there, and I'd bring it all home. It'd be burgers as well. And I would go home, be p- crushing beers with the family, friends, whoever it was, and I'd just be m- mowing down <laughs> all the food that I stole from the reception after the game. So chicken souffle is a is a not everyday thing. It's like a special occasion dish? Yes, it's a special occasion I whenever I see my mom. So, uh, you know, I'm not with her every day. So yeah. usually like typical, like once a month I see her or so. So um, when I get to see her, she's always making uh, her chicken souffle at least one of the nights that I'm there. Okay, so the next image inside the mind of Gronk is Jane Fonda? Oh. Where does this take you to? Yes, uh, this just takes me uh, back to about, I think it was about April last year. And uh, we were just in a locker room scene. I'm just picturing that locker room scene right now where Jane Fonda, um, her role was just kind of, she was so excited to see me that she just starts hitting on me in the locker room. And uh, she just read a novel, a novel about me. And uh, she has it on her as well. So I can just picture her looking up to me right now and uh, just, <laughs> you know, shooting out her lines. They were very inappropriate. So I'm not gonna say oh. them there, you know, all right? They weren't that inappropriate, but uh, you, I was just pretending they were. But uh, it was just a great time. It was a great day. You know, we were all back together, all the, all the Patriot players back in the day, from Danny, Julian, Tom. You know, the band was back together. That's and amazing. that was, you know, a great day. And I can't wait to see the movie when it comes out. It looks it looks like it's going to be, you know, hysterical. Yeah. And, and it's very, uh, like, journey type. Watch, watching them go on a journey and be very interested in it. It's called 80 for Brady. I mean, J- Jane Fonda's a legend. Yes, yeah, she is. She is a legend. Uh, they were all legends. Sally Fields, she was there as oh, well. Gosh. I was actually just on Tom's podcast and I was telling Tom, uh, you know, watch out for Sally. I mean, I, I feel like you two are going to be a couple soon. After the connection that I saw they had uh, when I, when they were on set, <laughs> and he kind of agreed with me, but then he he threw it back at me and said he he sees me with Jane. He saw the connection that we had as well, which you know I'm just that great of an actor that he thought that there was a relationship right there between Jane and I because You're, we were just acting so well. That's I, I don't I don't have a follow for that. I did not expect that. Um, Sally Fields and Tom Brady, uh, page six, take it away. Do what you need to do with that information? All right, let's go to this one. Uh, this next one is Cliff Kingsbury in Thailand. I heard he booked a one-way ticket. He's refu- he's turning down uh, interviews from teams for offensive coordinator jobs. What is it? What do you think about this? Yes, legendary move. I mean. Why not take some time off? I mean, I took time off three years ago. I wasn't answering my phone. You can always come back, Cliff. I mean, you're a young man. You've had a ton of success in your life as a head coach and in, uh, in the college ranks and also as a head coach in the NFL. Uh, your time was just due in uh, at Arizona uh, with the Cardinals, but uh, you're going to have so many more opportunities. But also, there's no reason to ever rush it, especially when you're a young buck like that. And uh, you just want to go get some sun. I mean, the NFL is six months straight of just nonstop working. So take your time. More coaches need to be yeah. like Cliff when they get fired and just go out there and, <laughs> and enjoy the sun. More coaches need to be like Cliff when they get fired. <laughs> go out there and enjoy the sun. You're cracking me up. This next one isn't that funny, though. This is, pre- this is scary, but it's a preview for the weekend that we're trying to work in here. Where does this take you? I mean, I mean, like back to Halloween. I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, that's a what? A it's the, the, eagle, it's the Eagles dogs, jersey. It's the dog mask from the Eagles season. You don't remember? Did you block this out? No, I don't even remember that at all. I've never seen the dog mask from the Eagles season. I mean, who was wearing it? What are you, Chris Long, former teammate of yours, Lane Johnson, all of them were. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I just haven't been paying attention to the Eagles, I'm sorry. That is the most Patriot thing ever. 
that you didn't even, this was like the most viral thing of their postseason vibe and you don't even know it existed. And that makes me so uh, happy. Yeah, never seen it before. <laughs> I love it. Which it one? Just, it's, it's just making me think oh. of my dog now and oh, okay. how, just, yeah. how I just miss Ralphie. Ralphie <laughs> should be on my lap right now. I'm sorry, oh Ralphie, gosh. that I'm not home. Okay, well, that I thought you were going to talk about your Super Bowl loss to the Eagles, whether or not they can do it. Do you think they could go all the way again this year? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, they got A.J. Brown. Jalen Hurts is, is playing out of his mind right now. So uh, they definitely have a shot, uh, no doubt about that. But they got to work for it. I mean, they're coming off of that, that bye week. They're a young team still, so it's kind of up in the air. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying they're uh, a juggernaut team yet, but uh, they have a chance, and they got to, you know, put it all together. But I think the Niners are going to oust the Eagles if, if they meet up. I saw your montage, your training montage with Vinatieri. He was really awesome on our show yesterday. Uh, I didn't realize how ripped he was till he was on the show, and then after the montage got released. So, what are, have you seen? Have you seen this? What is going on? Actually, I had no clue that Vinatieri um, is that ripped. He actually wore a long sleeve the whole time. Oh. So I thought he was actually just a little chubby the whole time, <laughs> but uh, it's actually all muscle <laughs> underneath his hoodie that he was wearing. And I'm kind of disappointed he didn't show any of it off to me uh, when we were hanging out shooting the training montage. But let me tell you, man, he's a great actor. He's a great guy. Um, he's got a great personality. And uh, I loved working with him for two days straight uh, shooting that training montage video. So uh, I appreciate you, Adam, for what you, what you do. And uh, let me tell you, I'm sorry for making fun of you all day. You were making fun of me also, but we had a great time together. And uh, hopefully we get to meet up soon and uh, get to kick it again. And, and we'll get a workout in, too. I didn't know you were yeah. that jacked up. I didn't know he was 50. that jacked. How's practice going? Practice is going real well. Um, I'm definitely improving. Uh, we had a little mishap over the weekend. I, I actually got really sick, which, which stinks. Being sick blows. I think I had the flu. And uh, I had to cancel my one kicking session Sunday night. And now I'm on the road for a week, so I'm going to be kicking again tomorrow. I'm going to be practicing on my own tomorrow, but um, I got another, you know, kicking um, kicking appointment set up for next week. I'm not going to miss it. Uh, it was very sad when I had to cancel. I, I was very disappointed, but health is always priority number one, and uh, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna just keep taking off. Every time I hit the field, I improve every time, and I'm comparing it to whenever people ask me. It's like golfing for the first time. It's stage one. You got to be patient, and you just got to keep repping it um, and just train that muscle memory. Oh, we are excited for you. I'm sorry for the setback. We hope you're feeling better, and thanks for making time for us. I know you've been on. I loved you on um, on Travis and Jason's podcast too. You were so hilarious. That must have been so fun, huh? Yes, it was really fun, actually. It, that was actually the night right before I got sick, oh. the next morning. Actually, I think it was that night, like two hours after I did the podcast. But uh, the Travis, uh, Kels, and Jason Kels, I, podcast, how do you say their last name? Kels or Kelsey? Kelsey. That's one thing I forgot to ask them. Right. All right, Kelsey. Their podcast was great, and uh, they do a really good job. I love their energy. They, they bounce off each other yeah. very nicely. And... Uh, you know, Jason, you really don't know much about Jason because uh, Travis is obviously, you know, catching tight ends and he's out in the media a lot more and his mm -hmm. face is all over the place. But uh, Jason definitely brings it to the table, man. You know, I really like enjoy talking to him and getting to know him uh, just as much as I know Travis. So they're a great combination. They're a great duel. And, um, you know, they're going to have things set up for them after football. They are. They're killing it. And I love that you said that he's not, you know, the highest paid tight end isn't paid enough. And I just love, I love the tight end camaraderie. I, I always have. Um, you may, I thought maybe you got sick because you were just emotional about the Tom Brady thing because he loses. We didn't like seeing it. Nobody does. And then, you know, he runs into the tunnel. He kisses his parents. Thank you. Thanks the local media. Thanks all of that. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Like, do you, do you, are, are you emotional about it? Sad, happy for, you know, his season to wrap up around loved ones? What are your thoughts? You know, he just, he just knows how to check all the, all the, all the marks. Mm. You know, he kisses his parents. You know, I love you, mom and dad. Thanks to media. You know, he's such a good guy, Tom. And that's why I love him. Uh, he had me on his podcast the morning of the game uh, and then it aired yesterday. Um, at the day after the game 
Um, he's just a great guy. He's a great human. You know, he just wants to do the right thing, improve every single day, uh, which is just so great about him. But, uh, you know, it's definitely tough, you know, to see the Bucks go out like that. I know all the guys in the team. Uh, well, not all of them, but basically know all of them. And uh, they're great guys, man. It's a great locker room. They all fight for each other. They're all in it for each other. There's no one that's selfish in that locker room. And um, they're just they're just fun to be around as well. So it was sad to see that. I mean, it's football, though. I bet in that situation as well. And, uh, you know, you just got to bounce back uh, in life. I mean, it stings for a couple of days for sure. Yeah. But, you know, those guys, they don't need to hold their head down at all. I mean, they have a lot to be a proud of. You know, making it to the playoffs again, you know, just being able to complete a football season is actually something that you should be proud of. I mean, I used to hang my head down sometimes after seasons, but just really think of what you accomplished throughout the whole year. It's unbelievable. There's only one team in the NFL that is going to go home, you know, not disappointed. And it's the team that wins the Super Bowl. So one out of 32 teams is, is the, yes, is the only team that is hanging their head high. So if you just think about it, you know, just think about what you, you accomplished throughout the year, how successful you were, you know, keep your he head held high and uh, keep on fighting. Rob, did you always have that mentality, like even when you were playing? Because I wanted to ask you, like, what in the rare occasion that you and Tom Brady had a loss in a big game, what was he like? Was he down for a while? Like, what was that plane ride like? Or was he like, oh, we had a great year, like you're saying? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, it changes a lot your perspective when you know yeah. when you're young twenties to you know your mid twenties to your thirties. But a, a regular season game, you know, with the Patriots actually, uh, you know, throughout my twenties, if we won a game, the next day it felt like we still lost the game, and if we lost the game, it felt like you were in super depression for like two days. At, um, at the Patriots or like for the whole week. So, you know, so that's what made you really want to win the games when you were with the Patriots yeah. because you didn't want to ever feel that depression feeling for like the two days after the game. You're like, we have to win the game. We, you know, we have to win the game. So we have a good week. So we feel good tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I used to do that too. Sometimes, you know, you know, put my head down and, and be all sad and stuff, but it's like, you know, the other team gets paid as well. You know, they're they're the best athletes in the world as well. Um, as long as you go out there and you give your best performance, you give it all you have, uh, then, you you know, you got to walk away from the field with your head held high. I mean, if you're out there, you're messing around. I mean, you're being um, kind of like a jackass. Like, you're not, you know, doing yeah. what you need to do to prepare. Then, yeah, you, you, should, you shouldn't even be there. But, yeah, you can hold your head down that you didn't give it your all. That's when, that's when, like, you know, you should be disappointed in yourself. But if you give it your all, all year long, you know, you're always banged up, fighting through injuries. I mean, it's, so, it's, it's something that's pretty amazing that you accomplish getting through a whole NFL season. It's amazing how much you, you are so self-aware, what your evolution has been since, like, early 20s to playing in your, you know, upper 20s and now looking back on it even though you're still so close to it, and, the, and we all know the door is open still, but it, you change. Your perspective changes, your whatever, and that's why Tom Brady is so, it's so wild to me because he's 45, and, like, I'm sure he's changed, but he kind of hasn't, too. And that's so rare, and it's so crazy that he's still attacking it the same way, um, and he wants to win and be the best. But, you know, the good side of this, because you, you seem pretty optimistic in general, like, Fox could get something with you two going now. He's got to deal with Fox. you got to deal with Fox. Like, let's go. Yes, it's going to be a little mayhem over the next month or two for uh, himself, definitely. I mean, you know, with the media, the whole free agent process, yeah. it's, just, it's just always a frenzy. There's no doubt about that. But, yes, there is a huge opportunity that is presented that's on the board, you know, with Tom going to Fox as a lead analyst. And then myself, you know, just, just a backup analyst at, in the studio, just throwing my perspective <laughs> in, you know, throwing my ones and twos in there and there. You know, I like doing that. I mean, I'm, I'm not a commentator, you know, play-by-play -play caller. What about sideline? Maybe a little bit of the sideline. I mean, I like being in that studio with all the guys, mm -hmm. with Strahan, um, just Howie Long, just just all of them. They're just Jimmy Johnson, Terry Bradshaw. They're just 
yeah. Kurt Menfee. They're just all great dudes, and they're all hilarious. They're always joking around, but also getting it done at the same time. Uh, so I'm kind of a of a studio guy. Okay, you know? studio guy. <laughs> you on the sidelines would be hilarious, but I I see what you're saying. You're mentioning the the media frenzy. You're kind of you dip in and out of the media stuff. Did you hear um, anything with Aaron Rodgers on McAfee yesterday? Did you hear any of that? Yes, yes. I I heard the only thing I saw. I mean, I just saw a quote. I mean, I didn't you know hear yeah. the whole thing or anything, but I saw a quote that. He's gonna win. He he can definitely win the MVP again, like or something like that. It was yeah. it was right around there. Let's, but I mean, I just I just don't get it. Like like let's don't show you, you want to Let's show you the quote, right. or let's show you the quote. Right, let's, let's show you it. the quote really quick. He said, "Do I think I can still play? Of course. Can I play at a high level? The highest. I think I can win MVP again in the right situation. Is the right situation in Green Bay or somewhere else? I'm not sure. I don't think you should shut down any opportunities. I think there's more conversations to be had. What what's your take on that? I, I'm totally fine with everything he said, except one major part and that's the mvp again it's just that i think i i think i could win another super bowl mm -hmm. and, it, and then that would have been totally fine like like bro like why are you thinking mvp like don't you want super bowls like super bowls are, are i think five times greater than a, than an mvp award like we all know that you won the mvp a few times now but like you know everyone would everyone would know even more how many more super bowls you've won than MVP, so that, that's why I'm just a little confused about that, you know, about that quote that he just had. I mean, it should be Super Bowls. You well, should never be thinking the MVP when when you want when Super Bowls are twice. And twice you've won, you've won four. He's better. won one, and you know, a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of a lot of people are saying Brady wouldn't like like Brady wouldn't say that. Brady would never. Brady would say like, I want my team. I want that. And these both these guys are going to have to make decisions. Uh, do you, would you? What do you think Aaron Rodgers does? Because it was cool. Without that quote, he did go on and on and talk about the process, right? Like what he's thinking about. Do I want to walk away and retire? Do I want to go to a different team? What factors are important to him? Like, do you? Does that resonate with you? Because you've had to make those sort of decisions too. Uh, yes, definitely. That it definitely resonates a little bit. I mean. If you're in the opportunity, if you're in the, you know, have the opportunity to check out all your options, then yes, my advice to anyone that's out there, even Cliff uh, Kingsbury, is to check out all your options, you know, <laughs> and also take some time off if you can. If you're in that position where you can take some time off, chill out, relax. I mean, football is always 24 7, go, 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 a lot of stress. So if you just want to de stress, take some time off, do that as well. But I mean, obviously, in that situation, you really can't, you know, you get only like this month yeah. to take the time off. Uh, you're not like a fire coach like Cliff and can just go and then come back in a year or um, and he's not at the age where, you yeah. know, he's going to take off a year, Aaron, and then come back. So in this process, I mean, it's definitely a time to consider everything. I mean, sit back, relax, write the pros and cons of the of everything and i would pick the best opportunity you know for you and your family for all your loved ones that are around you and then also the best opportunity to go out there and win a super bowl it's well yes. said yes gronk well said uh, you officially get an award you've held the camera for like 18 minutes unbelievable we're gonna let you go that was incredible we appreciate it but i will say we went inside the mind of Gronk, and you've got, you're on a roll here already. You picked the Giants' upset over the Vikings last week. You picked it quickly, decisively. Let's see if we can get this two weeks in a row. Quickly, before we let you go, the schedule, please. Pick your upset, Rob Gronkowski. Oh, man. Oh, man. We got the the upset. Oh. All, all the, the home teams are I favored. I mean, there's only, there's only, there's kind of only... I mean, the Jaguars and the Giants would be the upset games, right? I mean, like all the, the all the teams on the left, all the traveling teams are are would be the upsets. Yeah, I know. I see what you mean. So, Jags, right. Giants, Bengals, Cowboys. Who could win? Ooh. It's tough. I'm the yeah, it's tough. But the the team that has the best chance to win that's on the left side. I would say would be the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincy Bengals, and you're, you love those Bills, too, so that's saying a lot. I do love the Bills. I'm yeah. a Bills fan, but I'm saying if, if the, the biggest the if it could team happen. that was too, one of, yes, if it could happen, the team has the best chance to win that was on the left side right there 
would be the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> Gronk, yes. Gronk, you are the absolute best. And you, my favorite thing that's ever happened on the show is you not knowing if it's Kelsey or Kels, which is just my favorite actual thing. It's amazing. I know. You are incredible. Hey, feel better. Rest up. Maybe you can get some chicken souffle next time you see your mom. And good luck with the kicking practice. Yes. Thank you, Kay. I only dropped the phone once, so yeah, one that, fumble throughout was, the show. <laughs> one fumble is perfect, yeah. and we loved it. We thank you. We appreciate you. And we'll be back with Mark Ingram, who is on the show after this dishing out red cards. Marlon Humphrey's sister tweeted that she likes Sam Hubbard. That's division rivalry stuff, Ingram. we got to get into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. That's went to my hobby that lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. Joining us now, a gentleman whose optimism and positivity knows no bounds. He just finished 12 seasons in the NFL uh, as a top-notch running back for the Saints. It's our good friend Mark Ingram joining us, hopefully from vacation. Okay, what up? No, I'm at the crib down here oh, in okay. South Florida, just, just just kicking it. What's up? I mean, you're kicking it, but I feel you got work to do. You gotta like, you gotta go help Lamar. We need a hype man. We need a whole thing going on. That's your boy. Hey, hey man, you know, El Freaky, he the man. You know what I mean? He always balling. And uh, I didn't like some of the stuff that was being said about my guy today. I mean, like over the weekend, you know, like um, clearly the man was hurt. Uh, and ever since I was his teammate, I know he's going to risk it all to be out there on the field, especially in the playoff game. So if he wasn't out there, it was for a, a good reason. And obviously, he needs to get that knee right. And um, wish my boy the best, wherever it's at. If it's in Baltimore, which would be – a highly disappointment for them and that franchise if yeah. they didn't resign. But, you know, if, if, if not, somebody else would be ecstatic and elated to have them on their squad. Well, just so you know, and Brandon Marshall was on, and we were sparring about this. We were disagreeing. He said, don't play, protect. And I said, I know. I don't know Lamar, but I know he wants to play. He wouldn't have played with right. one if he can't. So just so with the record is straight, I was very much, Lamar is going to play if he can, even if it, is at a risk to him, and it's just working out really weird. But you were a Raven, you know that stuff. So, like, uh, what do you think happens? Do you think he stays in Baltimore, and or what would be a good fit for him that we should manifest? Hmm. I don't know if he stays in Baltimore. Jets? I mean, like, they should have been, they should have been paid him. They should have been paid him. So, so who knows? Do, do they franchise him? That could get ugly. Yeah. Um. The Jets. Uh, do they? Do they have the capital to get them? I don't know. I'm not sure what their, what their uh, I mean, conversation is. It would be the Jets, with. potentially Miami. You're looking at, like, the the Ooh. Raiders, maybe. I've been seeing, I've been seeing like, pictures of him on my timeline in the black and gold with the Saints. Like, I don't know what's going on, man. I, I've been hearing all type of stuff. You know, there's all types of speculation going on. So I, I don't know what's happening. I just was scrolling my timeline. And somebody had a yeah. picture of him in a Ravens jersey. You, so I don't know. What, I mean, I mean, in the Saints jersey. I don't know so about I the, don't know what's happening. I don't know about the Jets capital. I don't think the Saints have a have the capital. They definitely don't have the capital. <laughs> 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 red card, red card. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, Saints hey, are, hey, wish Saints are I 58. Play, I just want to play on my dog again, so whatever. I know, and maybe you will. You're a free agent. So Saints are $58 million over the cap. Woo! Ooh. That's some debt. They got to have a payment plan for that. That is ridiculous. They've been had debt, though. They always <laughs> find a way to finesse that. You know, Mickey, he, he, he the guru Mickey. up there. He always find a way to finesse that cap. Mickey, yeah, Mickey likes to move those decimal points, hide some under the mattress. It's just how it goes. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a finesse, man. He's a great financial type of, you know, guru type, moving the cap here, there, kicking the can down the road. Yeah. You know, restructure this, restructure that. And now we got money. Listen, <laughs> we, ta we talk to, you know, we're talking about Tom Brady. We're talking to Rob Gronkowski, who recently retired. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers. You know, in the next couple seasons, you're even just this season, you're a free agent. You're making a decision on where you want to go. We're hearing Aaron Rodgers on or McAfee yesterday talking about what factors are important to him. What's number one for you when you're looking at either staying there with Mickey and those decimal points and that finessing or looking to go play somewhere else? What's numero uno? Man, the opportunity to be a champion, the opportunity to win a Super Bowl. Obviously, I want to be able to... Um, have a significant role on the team and be able to 
you know, show what I can do to help the team win. I feel like I still have that ability. I still have that desire and that passion to go out and perform at a high level to be able to help my team win. So number one would be the opportunity to win a Super Bowl. Number two would be, you know, the opportunity for me individually to be able to help the team win a Super Bowl as well. So um, the number one thing I want to do is I want to win a Super Bowl. You know, this career isn't forever. Yeah. And I, that's one thing I'm missing. I'm missing that Lombardi trophy. And um, my dad has one, so I got to put one in there too. So, um yeah, we uh, that's the number one thing, seeing what team has yeah. a true possibility to go out there and compete for a championship. Well, some could argue then that would be chasing a great coach because you look at what Dable did, the Giants are in it, Doug Peterson, Super Bowl winning coach, goes to Jacksonville, and they're in the divisional round two. Shanahan, all those guys are great coaches, so maybe you just follow Sean Payton wherever he goes. Hey, he drafted me, he brought me back from Houston, you know, all options are on the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love, I love the Who That Nation. That's where I belong. But, you know, all options are on the table. This thing is a business. You know, I love to be back in New Orleans with my guys because I feel like we can we can accomplish that there. But um, we'll see. Hear, we'll see. March, out, Mark. March is Mark, a couple months away. Hear me out. We talk about Sean Payton, right? He interviews. I don't know if you know this. He interviewed with the Broncos. You and I talked about how that's not really makes sense. Doesn't really make sense. He said he's okay. He's interested in the Texans. He, which is interesting. He's expected to meet with the Panthers this week. He's the bell of the ball, right? He's getting wined and dined by all these teams, flying them out. Like, uh, what should he ask for in this courting process? You know, he's got he's got caviar. He's getting like a red carpet. Like, hype up your old coach. Like, he's he's doing the right thing by getting everybody to love him right now. Right. For one, I need a private jet. <laughs> I need the PJ, man. I need me like a Rolex or a paddock, you know what I mean? Something along those lines, you know. Uh, spoil me, spoil me. <laughs> you know, what do, what? how much do you want me? How much do you really love your boy? You know what I mean? So, you know, put me a nice together, a care package. You know what I mean? Put me together something that's going to entice What's me. What's in the care to package? I told you, we need, we need a, a, a what? A thousand miles, a hundred thousand miles on the jet. <laughs> We need we need one of them new Rolexes or Paddocks 2023 that's coming out. Oh. You know what I mean? We need we need you know we need a nice little pair of kicks, some Louis V's. I don't know what you like. You know what I mean? We just need some style. We need some profile. Yeah. We well, you wear point. his you wear his shoe size, so that's why you're you want him to get shoes. I see you. I see of you course, angling, angling for yourself. All them extras. I need them extras. I have a crazy <laughs> I have a crazy thing where I think he's gonna end up back in New Orleans. I'm just saying, I think the options, Chargers might have been interested. They're staying with your boy Staley. I don't know. McCarthy, they got that win. They're going further in the playoffs. I don't see a move there happening. So what? what's Broncos and Texans a better option than staying with Houdat Nation? I don't, I don't think. I think he might be back. I, I love your train of thought, Kay. But at the same time, I'm like, if I'm Sean and I leave the Saints. Yeah. Just come back a year later? Why not? I mean, I love the thought. I if love anybody the idea. could maybe do it, needs, it's him. Maybe he needed a year off. Who knows? But, like, would you leave your network for one year just to come back to them? Yeah. <laughs> you would? Yeah, I would. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well, then, okay. Well, okay. then... I, I'm just saying. I just think I think it might play out that way. Just keep your eyes peeled, all right? All right, let's hey, do this. My eyes are open because <laughs> I told you I want to be back in New Orleans. So if Sean's back in New Orleans, it makes the most sense. It, it makes the most sense to me, too. All right, let's do this. Red card and yellow card. We like to give um, things, you know, some footage from last weekend. And let's start here. We're going to – which one are we starting with? We're going to start with soccer and Brady. All right, when you're playing soccer, and that's what this is all about, you own DC United, all that, a good slide tackle in soccer is great. It's effective. But what was Tom thinking here? Oh, that's dirty. That is dirty. My dog, man, come Ooh. on. These quarterbacks be doing some dirty stuff. And then when you do it to them, they want to cry wolf to the ref and everybody around. Yes. Hey, Tom Brady, man, you've been doing this 20-some plus years. We know this is unacceptable. That's a red card, my guy. <gasps> An elimination from the playoffs at the age of 45 anniversary. What is he thinking? I don't know. I mean, if we we're watching Premier League or, you know, Champions League or something like right. that, this right here is very aggressive and it calls for a red card. Now the team's playing with 10 men. 
Red card here. Okay, I want to get to where's the uh, yeah here. Okay, so the biggest game, of course, Bengals Ravens. This happened. Blah blah blah. Sam Hubbard, it, incredible. We're never going to forget this. 98 yard for a touchdown. It's. I'm not going to ask you about this play. After the game, you know Marlon Humphrey, okay? His sister, who he's very close with, I know. His sister tweets, "Wow, Sam Hubbard kind of fine." That's funny. <laughs> and then Marlon, do we have Marlon's tweet? Marlon says, see, this is why we lost right here. It be your own flesh and blood. I want emancipation. What, <laughs> what type of penalty does this deserve? Sis get a red card, 100%. Sis get the red card. Like, we, brother is out here battling in a in the wild card game versus division rival. And one of the most crucial plays in the game, the difference in the game happens, and this is all you can say, is that Sam Hubbard can't find. I mean, like, she's not That's wrong. a red card, sis. Huh? Oh, you agree? <laughs> I agree, but I think, but I, Marlon just makes me so happy. I, Marlon reading that makes my life. He said, I, I need a, he said, I need emancipation. <laughs> <laughs> I love Marlon. You're the best, Mark. Enjoy your day in Florida, and we'll talk to you soon. Hopefully, I see you at Super Bowl. Yep, I'll see you there. Oh, hopefully. Oh, I always You know do. what I mean? I'll be out there. We'll run into so. champagne. I mean, Cam Jordan's trying to take your spot on my show, just letting you know. Well, to Gronk and Mark Ingram for coming on the show. Kevin says, super throwdown round sounds awesome. I mean, come on. I'm on two. Oh, okay. Something good here. That's okay. Super throwdown round. On tomorrow's show, we hang out with TJ Edwards of the Eagles, who are the one seed breasted and taken on the Royals. Hello, Mr. Hamilton. I could not believe that we showed What's Gronk up? this, thinking it would bring up scary feelings of losing to the Eagles in the Super Bowl. No idea. The fact that he had no idea <laughs> what that was was just, it was, it was unbelievable to me. And I think you hit it on the head. It's just like, it was such a New England thing. They were so locked in and not paying attention to what was going on in the outside world that he genuinely didn't know what this was. Gronk is like, not a, he's a toughie. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm like thinking to myself, did they, was, do we have the wrong image? Is it the white mask that he would recognize? What like it, and he start, then he starts talking about his dog and how he wishes his dog would be on his lap and I'm like I don't know how this went so wrong. <laughs> I don't know either. It was unbelievable though. <laughs>